Walker Town Council meeting at 7.01 p.m. Tom, were you good? All right. Council, could you please sign in? All council members are present with the exception of Councilman Josh Rivero and Councilwoman Renee Williams. I don't see any kids in the audience tonight. This is the first time in a long time. We, we have some young at heart, but we don't have little ones in the audience. Normally we have them lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Since we don't have any, if you all wouldn't mind standing and joining me in honoring our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Awesome. All right. Next up is uh, special presentations. And we've got an item for our new Planning Commission introductions. Rosemary, would you like to come down and... Sure thing. And check and see if the mic's on there. I, I think it is, but I'm not positive. All right, would the planning commissioners step up, please? Ooh. I have her all hands. I have her all hands. That's okay. Intr introduce them to the camera for the people at home who are, who are watching on oh Facebook God. Live. Okay. Um, Squeeze in tight. John Howell, and he's being reappointed this evening. And John first came to the town as an alternate in 2013. In 2014, he was appointed as a regular commissioner. Congratulations, John. Thank you, Rosemary. And then next to John, on his right, is Commissioner Rich Forrester. Rich was appointed as an alternate in 2006. 716 and was reappointed as a regular commissioner this year in 2017. And to John's right is a newly appointed soon <laughs> alternate, um, Ruth Ann Nelson. And to Ruth Ann's left is Commissioner Ileana Burke. Ileana came as an alternate, was appointed in 2015, and she was going to be reappointed as a regular commissioner in 2017. Congratulations. <laughs> and then next we have Kim Rodell, that will be a newly appointed alternate commissioner tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you. All right. I don't see Dennis Houston from the chamber here tonight, so I'm assuming we don't have a Parker Chamber update, so we'll skip that. And I also don't see anyone from the Downtown Business Alliance here tonight, so we'll skip the DBA uh, update as well. So next item is our uh, is public comment. This is for any items that are not currently on our agenda. If you're here for an item that is on our agenda, there'll be a time for public comment uh, during that presentation. So there's a three minute time limit for public comment. No action will be taken on it. It's just an opportunity for citizens to uh, give their voice and opinion on, on whatever they choose. There's a clock right above me that says three minutes and I've got one in the back as well. So we'll run the timer. If there's anyone here wishing to address council for public comment, this is the time. And seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.05 p.m. and move on to the next, which is reports, items, comments from mayor and council. How about uh, Mr. Martin? Um, well, before have... Josh gives his, I just want everyone in the audience to take a quick look. Josh is probably the tallest person in this room, aside from Jason Rogers in the back. And he sets his chair about an inch off the ground. So he looks like he's only about four foot four when he's sitting down, but he's really like six foot eight, something like that. I always wanted to be four foot four. Four foot four. Go ahead, Josh. It's not that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have it. Just wanted to wish everybody a safe and happy Fourth uh, of July. Um, obviously, with the fire ban in effect, it takes some of the uh, normal Fourth of Julying out of it for some folks. But just want everybody to be enjoy a safe and happy holiday. Yeah. Amy. Several of us did attend the um, Colorado Municipal League conference uh, oh, last week, week before. 
And it's a great time for us to get together. We have all of the elected officials throughout the state, pretty much from the local level all the way up to gov the governor's office. Um, several other staff members attend that meeting as well. And so it's just a really good time for us to attend sessions that pertain to what's going on in our community and also to network with the others surrounding our municipality here. Um, I also did the, attended the Parker Chamber Board of Directors meeting, provided an update to the town. And normally I'll go in and just kind of fill them in. Dennis, who unfortunately is not with us this evening, unable to be with us this evening, from the chamber, always comes, provides updates to those of you who attend these meetings. And then I just, in turn, I'll go to their meetings as well and provide any type of um, informational updates, answer questions at that time. Several of us act as liaisons to several commissions, boards, committees throughout the town and even the Denver metro area. Um, I also <laughs> attended the Pay Series launch. What are you guys over there laughing about? I attended the Pay Series launch. And for those of you who do not know, um, the Pace Center has now announced their new 2017-2018 season. You can go online, there's brochures all over, there's a lot of great shows going on, not only at the Pace Center, at the Old School House, um, we have things over here in Discovery Park happening, such as the uh, free concert in the park, that's on Thursday nights. We had that 80s band last week, and quite a few people over there. But again, it was just fun to see everyone in the community, kind of like a fun gathering place and people were just greeting each other, enjoying the music, and it was a lot of fun to be a part of that. We also had an artist reception over at Deep Space honoring Sarah uh, Bowman. And that reception was also a fundraiser for the Parker Creative District. L keep an eye out for those. Those are really great um, opportunities and things going on in the town as well. And then this Thursday coming up, we have another free concert in the park at Discovery Park, 6 p.m., July 6th, and it's Chris Daniels and the Kings. That's right. about it. Debbie. Um, like Amy, I, I attended CML. We discussed that uh, some last week, but it was um, at um, dinner session. I mean, excuse me, at a um, study session. Um, I also attended the... Pace Center seasonal announcement, and we've got a lot of great groups coming. Did the art gala uh, at Deep Space, and uh, like Amy said, that was a not only just an opening for uh, a new artist, a young artist, uh, but uh, also a fundraiser for the Creative District. We and that from there we did uh, attend the 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 musical. Uh, event at Discovery Park with that 80s band. On Tuesday morning, I had Douglas County Housing Partnership, and um, I left those statistics, but I will, I will have them for next time. We do have a new board member on that group from Castle Rock, uh, Mr. Jess Loban, who ran for state senate this last, in 2000, um, uh, uh, 16. So I think that he will, um, He'll, he'll be a, a, a good addition. We've not had a, um, a representative from uh, the Castle Rock Council in, in some time. They, they have a staff member that attends, but just looks like a, a, a good addition. Mr. Dyack. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. I too went to CML, uh, again, to echo Council Member Holland's uh, words, uh, great time to uh, network with our fellow elected people as well as um, see, see these breakout sessions uh, to educate us up and provide some knowledge from different areas of the region. Um, just a great, uh, a great gathering. Uh, Pace season announcement party is uh, uh, both uh, uh, Councilmember Holland and Lewis have indicated. Um, I was told that uh, we had about 250 members there and just a touch under 40,000 in sales, which I think was almost double last year's. So uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good flow of uh, first day uh, tickets. And uh, Discovery Park concert, that 80s band, um, I was told our estimates were the first concert we had for Tunisia was about 850. Uh, that 80s band uh, drew, we estimated, about 2,700 people. So um, those concerts are gathering a pretty significant following here. Thanks. Absolutely. One other thing at CML that um, I thought was fairly outstanding and may contribute to some of the, the, the sales that we had, uh, that 
Uh, Colorado is at a 2.3% unemployment rate. It's the lowest in the entire nation. So that was something that of, of significance. Okay, good. Amy, did you have something else to add back? No? I do. It's, I got to pull it up. Okay. We are holding uh, Ball and Jack's get together over at Discovery Park as well, and that's on Monday the 10th at 10 a.m. I believe so. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to double check on the time, but I think that's a really great time for everyone to get together. They'll provide the little kits of balls and jacks for everyone to play with, and they want to try and break a world record, which I think there is none. So we. Yeah, might so the way the way it, it works with the record, <laughs> since there isn't one, there has to be an estab. You have to have one time to establish kind of a baseline. And so the hope is to get as many people out there to play the, lar the largest group of ball and jack games around, and then that'll establish a baseline. Then a year later, you can the Guinness people will require, then they go through the process of coming out and measuring it. And I got to be a Guinness judge one time at Legend High School. So there's- Coincidentally, it's next to the big ball and, yep. you know, and jack sculpture yep. in the park. So my updates, um, CML was a great opportunity um, for continuing education. The, the biggest, one of the best sessions that I attended was the session on the legality of drones. And I know Corey was, was there as well. It was interesting to see how uh, drones are perceived by municipal government, by FAA, and all of that. But the, the coolest example that they gave, well, the coolest, but the, just the show of how cr kind of crazy and wacky things are, um, there's kind of three categories of drone usage. There's public drone usage, there's private drone usage, and there's government drone usage. And, and they used an example and they showed, I guess there was a, some guys in, in Alaska that came up with this business idea of if you're out on the fishing boat and you want a 12 pack of beer, you can bring up your phone and order a 12 pack of beer and the drone will fly out a 12 pack of beer to you out on the boat that you're fishing off of. So in that scenario, if it's run by the government, it's legal. If it's run by a private individual doing it, it's legal. But if it's run by someone for a profit, it's illegal. So it was an example of how there's all these rules that don't quite make sense and, and how it fits into things. So it was a very good uh, session to go through. Um, concert in the park was incredibly well attended. I, uh, I was that, there for, got there 15, or about 15 minutes before it started and it was just packed. We left a little early to beat the rush out. It was really, really great to see that. And then last, I mean, there was a lot of other things, but last but not least, if uh, you guys remember last year at the Pace Center, Inspire Creative and Parker Arts partnered for a, uh, for a production that I happened to be blessed to be in called Spamalot. And uh, Spamalot, it was, we just found out uh, a week and a half ago, or about a week ago, that the Colorado Theater Guild, they have an annual award called the Henry Awards, and Spamalot was nominated for seven awards um, at that, and it's being, the award ceremony is being held actually at Pace, so this is through the whole region. And it's being held at Pace two weeks from tonight. So two weeks from tonight, I won't be here because I'll be over there. And Spamalot gets to perform a, um, one of the scenes and hopefully we'll take, away, take home a lot of hardware. Uh, so it's a pretty big honor just to be nominated, but it's a, a pretty cool thing. So we've got that. All right, so next item up is our consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with one motion and one vote unless a council member asks to have something removed for further discussion. So with that, council, I'd entertain further discussion or a motion on consent agenda items 7A through 7G. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Amy and a second from Josh. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is our town administrator's report. And since we're like into the minor leagues now with three deep, our single A town administrator, do you have anything else to add? Mr. Fusa? Mayor, with an introduction like that, I mean, what could I possibly <laughs> say? I, I We've got a deep bench and you're our... You're our we, we do. It's a, it's a terrific staff team. Um, and, and I'm happy to be covering for Michelle Kivlin and Jim Cleveland. And, and not burning down the house, so to speak, um, for, for today through uh, Wednesday. Just a reminder, the Stars and Stripes celebration for the 4th Thank of you. July holiday will be tomorrow at Salisbury Equestrian Park, 6 to 10 p.m. And with the stage one fire restrictions in place, it is the place to see fireworks in Parker, uh, in the Parker area tomorrow. And Town Hall will be closed tomorrow, correct? That, that's correct. We are closed for business tomorrow for the 4th holiday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
All right, next item on our agenda is item number nine. This is ordinance number 1.500 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to approve the easement agreement between the town of Parker and the Parker Water and Sanitation District concerning Salisbury Park North and Salisbury Equestrian Park. Alex? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The easements before you for consideration tonight are being requested by Parker Water as a part of their upcoming water resource centralization project. Um, this project will see water lines and other water infrastructure installed throughout the town. Um, it has the goal of both consolidating Parker Water's infrastructure and resources, and I believe it has the ultimate goal of preparing their system to accept water from the upcoming WISE water uh, transmission line that's going to be installed or completed soon. Um, Rebecca Tejada with Parker Water and Sanitation District is here tonight. Um, she can give you a brief overview of the project and answer any questions you have following my presentation. One portion of this project, upcoming project, um, proposes to install a water line between Parker Water's regional facility within Salisbury Park and several Parker Water wells on the western side of town. The proposed alignment for this water line runs through the very northeast corner of the Salisbury Equestrian Park property. Um, it then follows the southern and western boundaries of the Salisbury Park North property, where it, um, it terminates there near the north end of the property, where the water line will cross under Matsenbacher Road and enter a separate easement from a, property, a private property owner in that area. To accommodate this water line, uh, Parker Water is requesting a 25-foot wide non-exclusive easement covering this alignment. Engineering staff, in conjunction with parks and recreation staff, has reviewed and approved this alignment. Both the decreased width of the easement and its non-exclusive nature are um, attempts to minimize any future encumbrances this might have to amenities planned in this area through future park plans. This easement is proposed to be dedicated to Parker Water through a right-of-way and easement exchange between the town and Parker Water. Um, this exhibit shows a Parker Water and Sanitation District owned property located in the southern area of town. It's located near the intersection of Stroh Road and Matzenbacher Road, um, essentially directly south of the Stroh Soccer Park across from Stroh Road. It does encompass um, a large portion of Cherry Creek and the Cherry Creek Trail. <coughs> the town has requested um, that Parker Water dedicate a stretch of right of way and several trail easements through this property in exchange for these waterline easements. The area shown in red on this exhibit. Um, is in a, or a, a section of right-of-way that's necessary for the, to accommodate the ultimate widening of Stroh Road through this area. The two yellow areas are conceptual trail easements the town will be requesting from Parker Water to accommodate future connections of the Lemon Gulch Trail to the Cherry Creek Trail. Lemon Gulch is a drainage way you can see on the southern end of this property. Developers will be constructing the Lemon Gulch Trail to the west and south of this property, so the town requires these easements to connect to the Cherry Creek Trail over either one or both of these alignments in the future. The easement and right-of-way areas requested by the town of Parker Water are roughly equivalent, so this is proposed as strictly a, an exchange with no financial considerations um, changing hands. That concludes my presentation. Um, I can answer any questions you have. Staff does recommend the approval of this um, ordinance dedicating an easement, waterline easement to Parker Water and Sanitation District. As I mentioned, Rebecca with Parker Water is here to give you a quick explanation of the project. Council, do you have any questions for Alex before we have Rebecca come up? Nope. <clears throat> Rebecca, if you don't mind stating your name and address for the record, please. Sure, I'm Rebecca Tejada with Parker Water. And do you need my home address? Uh, you, do, your work address is fine. Okay, it's uh, 18100 East Woodman Drive, All right, Parker, awesome. Colorado. <laughs> uh, well, I'm a senior project manager at Parker Water, and um, I'm managing the pipeline component of the Water Resource Centralization Project, which is basically has three components. It is the um, consolidation of our 16 water supply sources into basically three locations, um, along with two peaking wells. Um, we are also uh, converting our system from free chlorine to chloramines, um, and as Alex mentioned, mentioned, that's so that we can bring in wise water from Aurora water and match their water quality. Um, Did you then, just say that Aurora has better water quality than us? No, they have different water quality. <laughs> <laughs> water quality. Nice. <laughs> Not better. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm new to the political arena, but I'll work on it. So, um, and then there's also the Canyons Pipeline and Pump Station, which is basically allows us to pass Wise Water through our system onto Castle Rock, who is assisting with um, the financial part of the Canyons Line and uh, the Canyons Pump Station. Um, and so part of that 
um, consolidation is we are consolidating um, several of our ground wells to uh, the regional well house, which is the location kind of the north east corner of Salisbury Equestrian Park, um, which is why we need the easement to get those pipelines to regional well house. So that's kind of an overview of the project. Okay. If there's any questions. Council, do you have any questions for Rebecca? No, it's just good. I know the, the strategy or the plan to get wise water down south has been a long term. It has been. It's plan, been so it's a, good to see it actually come to, yep. come to fruition. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Since this is a public hearing, we'll open it up for public comment at 721 p.m. If there's anyone wishing to address council? Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 721, and I would entertain further discussion or a motion, please. Move to approve ordinance number 1.500 on second reading. Second. We have a motion by Josh and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on our agenda is an item number 10. This is ordinance number 1.501 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to approve the first amendment to deed of conservation easement in gross by and between the town of Parker and Douglas and the Douglas County Land Conservancy concerning the Harvey property. Corey, are you gonna lead us or? I think I am. All right. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this ordinance, if approved, would amend an existing conservation easement. Uh, the town is the owner of the Harvey property, which is just to the north of essentially Canterbury Parkway, the large open space. The current conservation easement burdening the property would prohibit the conveyance of water rights. Um, as part of including... And before you go, just truthfully, for the people on camera who are watching, because the issue has been asked online many, many times with specific to the Harvey property. The Harvey property is at the end of Canterbury and, and Main Street there, that big open space area that was deeded to the county originally, and then the county deeded it to us. So the question that has been asked before is, well, now that the town has it, they're for sure gonna develop it and turn it into lots of bad things or whatever. There is a conservation easement on it, which means no, that cannot happen in any way, shape, or form. That is correct. The property is burdened by a conservation easement held by a third party, held by the Douglas County, um, or Douglas Land Conservancy. Right. Um, this amendment, the only thing this amendment would do would allow, as part of the inclusion into the Parker Water and Sanitation District, to convey the groundwater rights to the district so that the property can be served with water for the uses under the easement, which is to serve the wildlife and the uses that are permitted by the conservation easement. No new uses. Perfect. Just wanted to clarify that so it was understood. Council, do you have any questions for Corey on that? Nope. 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 All right. Since this is a public hearing, we'll open it up for public comment at 723. If there's anyone wishing to address council on this. Harvey Open Space. Come once, come twice. All right. Close public comment at 723, and I would entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 1.501 on second reading. Second. Motion by John and a second by Amy. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on our agenda is item number 11. This is ordinance number 3.01.113 on second reading. <coughs> This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 13.02.010 and 13.04.100 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning definitions and the B Business District. Paul. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, nice, nice members blazer. of the City Council. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be before you for the first time this evening. Um, as was just alluded to, the request this evening is ordinance number three. Uh, .01.113 amendments to the B business district and the definition section of the town land development ordinance. Uh, a little bit of background in 2016 the planning commission recommended and town council approved the removal of a number of uh, uses from the B business district. Uh, this was done with the intent to preserve properties that are zoned for retail commercial uses uh, and employment uses. The request this evening is to uh, allow some of those uses back in the B Business District with a square footage maximum of 3,500 square feet. 
Um, the, the second component is the addition of some uh, definitions to the code. Uh, the allowed uses would include things like the health clubs, the indoor amusement, uh, membership clubs, things like that. Um, there is a proposed definition for senior housing. However, the proposal this evening does not impact where senior housing would be located or would be allowed to be located. It simply adds a definition to the land development ordinance for clarity. In terms of analysis, uh, the staff has determined that these uses are important to a community. They foster a sense of community. They allow folks to gather, to worship, to do things of that nature. So allowing these uses at 3,500 square feet or less would meet the needs of the community, but still preserve those important opportunities for commercial services and employment uses. With that, staff recommends and planning commission voted five to zero to recommend that town council approve ordinance number three dot zero one dot one one three to allow for certain community uses 3500 square feet or less in the B business district and add certain definitions to the land development ordinance that would conclude staff's presentation however I'm certainly available for any questions you might have all right thank you very much council any questions for Paul no, no. no. all right we'll open it up for public comment at 7 26 p.m. Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment at 726 and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. Move to approve ordinance 3.01.113 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Debbie. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on our agenda is item number 12. This is ordinance number 3.205.29 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend ordinances number three dot numbers 3.205.3 series of 2004, 3.205.8 series of 2008, 3.205.13 series of 2009, 3.205.21 series of 2010, and 3.205.22 series of 2013, and section 13.04.110E of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Greater Downtown Zoning District and the adoption by reference of the standards and guidelines for development within the town of Parker. Paul. Very well done. Don't man. make me reread that. Re was a mouthful. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, round two. Um, uh, again, the second request this evening is for an ordinance to amend the Greater Downtown District Town Center uh, for uh, uh, similar sorts of uses, only a little bit larger as was previously approved. Um, as background, the town center is generally the intersection of Parker Road and Main Street. It is a relatively small portion of the community, and the request this evening would only impact this particular portion of the town. Um, this area currently consists of multiple community shopping centers. Uh, there is some aging retail space there, and um, retail today is changing with the Amazons of the world. Uh, the, the, the box, traditional box retail, uh, is certainly looking for new life. Um, with that, the request this evening would allow for certain uh, recreation, amusement, and entertainment uses that are 30,000 square feet or less. Uh, this will help to um, uh, bring some, some life and some energy to this particular corner, this particular part of town. Uh, in terms of the analysis, again, these, these sorts of uses are important to a community. This particular amendment would help to fill vacant commercial space. And allowing these uses with size restrictions of 30,000 square feet or less uh, would help to fill that vacant space and bring some activity to the center. With that, staff would recommend and Planning Commission voted five to nothing to recommend that Town Council approve ordinance number 3.205.29 to increase the permitted size of certain uses in the Greater Downtown uh, District Town Center. That would conclude this presentation, but certainly staff's available for any questions you might have. Thanks, Paul. Questions, guys? Nope. Public comment, 729. Come one, come all. All right. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 729 and entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 3.205.29 on second reading. Second. Motion by Debbie and a second by John. Council, please vote. 
And motion passes unanimously. Next item on our agenda is item number 13. This is ordinance number 5.06.39 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 7.04.010 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning abandoned vehicles. And who better to talk about abandoned vehicles than Corey Hoffman. Corey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the town council. Uh, this ordinance, if approved, would um, uh, allow for a minor amendment to the code. Um, currently, there is a 15-day notice for abandoned vehicles in the um, general provisions of the municipal code. There's then a two-day notice um, in the model traffic code as adopted by the town for abandoned vehicles on public property. This would clarify that the 15-day notice period only applies to vehicles on private property and the two-day notice would apply to vehicles on public property all right council questions for corey the he splitting of legal hairs he lives and dreams about abandoned vehicles <laughs> probably no? jeeps but probably no. jeeps stop it all right seeing no uh, questions from you guys we'll open it up for public comment at 7 31 p.m Seeing none, we'll close public comment and it'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 5.06.39 on second reading. Second. I motion by Amy, second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item number 14. This is ordinance number 3.329 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend section 13.03.040, section C1 and 2 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the enforcement of the Parker Land Development Ordinance. I almost said code, ordinance. And uh, Corey, you're gonna rock it again for us. Uh, once again, this ordinance, if adopted, um, would memorialize that no neighborhood services is no longer part of the community development department. It is now part of the police department. The, these code amendments would allow neighborhood services as part of the police department to enforce the provisions of the Parker Land Development Ordinance. So it is just cleaning up the code to um, make it consistent with the recent change as it relates to the uh, neighborhood services being placed under the police department. Okay. Good. Council, any questions for Corey? No. No? Well, taking it mighty easy on him for being a. I know. Person. We've got to yeah. push a little bit harder. Our retainer takes you to like 10 o'clock tonight, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So we need to ask. <laughs> 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 All right. We'll open it up for public comment at 7.32 p.m. Last chance, guys. Public comment. Come one, come all. No, no movement. All right, we're going to close public comment at 7.32 p.m. Entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 3.329 on second reading. Second. second. Motion by John and a second by Amy. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last item on our agenda, which is item number 15. This is uh, ordinance number 3.01.114 on second reading, which is a bill for an ordinance to amend chapter 13.12 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning wireless communication facilities. But council, a request has been made to continue this item to a date certain of July 17th. So I'll need a motion to do that. So moved. Second. Motion by Amy and a second by Josh. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. For those of you watching at home and in the audience, the reason this was asked to be moved, it's concerning new uh, uh, law regarding uh, small cell sites and wireless towers. Um, staff, has, there's been a request made to staff to gather a little bit more information about it before it comes forward. So that ask was made to just simply postpone it to the next public meeting so staff can gather more information to uh, report to council on it. So that's what just happened. So with that, without any further business before council, we will adjourn at 7.34 p.m. Have a good evening, everybody. And normally there is a Parker Authority for Reinvestment meeting afterwards, but we don't have anything on the agenda tonight. So there is no meeting afterwards. No meeting after a meeting.